My videos are intended to give you ideas for living off the grid for yourself. And if you like those ideas and you want to incorporate them yourself and you're not really sure how to do it, be sure to hire a professional that understands it. Now, on with the video. Today I want to give some tips about just living off the grid that probably a lot of people don't think of and it took me a long time to figure out a lot of these things. They're not a real big deal but it just kind of helps make life easier and uh, one of the things that I want to talk about today is uh, your generator. Whenever you're off the grid occasionally you need generator. Whenever it's 10, 15 degrees below zero outside and you've got a battery in this thing that you're going to try to start it with, a lot of times those batteries just don't work. So one of the things I do in the winter time with my setup is I got me one of these little dollar, uh, it's a, it's called a dish pan. I got it from Dollar Tree for one dollar. And I take my battery out of the generator and I put it inside of this pan in the house. Uh, some place it's inconspicuous, you know, in a closet or something, but just so that battery doesn't get down to that minus 15 degrees or whatever, it stays warm. Then I bring it outside and I attach it to the generator using jumper cables, so that way I don't have to work bolts and all that stuff. I bring it out, I clip it on, I start the generator, and whenever I come back out to shut the generator off, I unclip the battery, take it back inside, put it back in this pan, and I'm good to go next time. But the generator starts every time that way, and it's been a great help for me, especially whenever you got a foot of snow on the ground, and you absolutely need it. <clears throat> the other thing that I want to talk about is uh, when you run the generator. If you're on solar like me, uh, when it's cloudy, you still get a little bit of a charge, and even worst case scenario for me, during the day, I, even if I get up and the voltage is low, the panels will still uh, maintain that voltage through the day, even though I don't really get much of a charge. So what I do is I just kind of endure through the day. Instead of starting the generator up when I get up in the morning and say, oh gosh, the battery voltage is low, let me start it. Well, I sort of just limp along through the day. And then and what I do is I wait until the end of the day when the sun's going down and then I will come out and start the generator once the sun's down and I know I'm not going to make any more power. What that does is that conserves even more gasoline. Uh, by doing that, uh, I'm only running the generator once in a day instead of twice. And I still run it for about an hour, hour and a half to charge the batteries up. We do our cooking, run the water heater and all that kind of stuff during that one hour. Take our showers, everything's done during that frame of time and uh, I cut my gas usage in half. Also, by waiting, there's been occasions where I'll wait to run the generator, and by the time that it's late afternoon like now, the sun actually comes out for a while. And those two or three, four hours of sunshine that I get during the day totally charges the system up, and then I don't even have to run the generator at all. So when you run your generator during the day is as important as running it when your voltage is low. Because if you're generating enough electricity to at least maintain where you're at, even though they might be low, uh, then at the end of the day, run that generator, get things charged up, and then when you go to bed at night, you got a full battery bank. Keeping your battery in out of the, uh, out of the weather helps, helps your reliability on that. Putting it in this. 
and uh, running it at the right time of day cuts down on your gasoline requirements. Okay, another tip that I want to give is the little chore of sweeping off those solar panels. One thing that I've always had an issue with with these is the handle is not quite long enough to reach all the way up the panels because my array is about 15 feet out from where I can reach it at any point. So with a regular garage push broom I don't quite reach that. And uh, I was uh, going through a bunch of my stuff once and my concrete working tool and I realized that I had these uh, concrete poles here for doing uh, like floating and finished trowels. You can buy these, they're in six foot lengths. You can get them in aluminum like this or in fiberglass, but what I like about them is you can attach these end to end and I've got some that will go out to 18 feet, but I only need 12 feet in this case so that I can reach the top panel. And the thing that's really nice about this is it just so happens to fit my garage broom head and, uh, and then I can go out and sweep those panels and I can get all the way to that top panel just by using these concrete poles. I don't remember how much these run because I bought them so long ago, but it really lets me reach all the way up to the top and sweep those panels off. So even if you have panels on the roof of your house, you can probably get enough of these poles and as long as you're strong enough to handle that length going up, you could probably sweep them off your roof. And the reason that I say it's important to get that snow off your panels, uh, a lot of people are under the impression that, well, if it's snowing and it's cloudy, I'm not going to get any electricity anyway. I can tell you from personal experience that there have been times that I've come in here into my electrical shed and I'm generating two amps of electricity with my panels covered up with snow. I go out and I sweep them off and bam, all of a sudden I'm making 1200 watts and it's snowing outside, totally overcast. So keeping those panels clear, you can still get enough electricity, generally, at least I can with mine because my array is so big, to at least charge the batteries up. That's it for this week's video. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. See you next week or next month or whenever I get to it. I always answer questions whether posted publicly or privately. See you then. And then in the evening when the sun's going down, <laughs> snow falling off the roof.